Deserts and Semi Deserts, Volume 1. As far as our eyes can travel, we see nothing but sands. The harsh sunlight falling on the sands makes this place the hottest region on planet Earth. Because of the harshness of the environment, these places are also known as Death Valley. It is easy to get lost in these regions because till far, far away, there are no signs of life. The only thing one can see is vast expanse of sands. Welcome to the region also known as place from where there is no return. Welcome to the desert and semi-desert bio. Deserts make one of the largest biomes of the Earth, covering about one-fifth of the planet Earth. They can be found on every continent, be it the hot Africa or the chilly plains of northern China. These vast deserts are present in various shapes and sizes across the globe. The world's major deserts lie in two bands near the Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn. Other biomes of planet Earth occupy certain area and have definite boundaries. But deserts have no definite boundaries unless and until they meet the mountain range or sea. In many places, the deserts gradually merge into another land biome like the shrubland. As we look at the vast desert, we will come across land that is located at the edge of the huge deserts. These lands are not completely deserts. They don't even fall in the category of shrubland. Such kinds of lands are known as semi-deserts. Greenland and Antarctica are also a form of desert and are known as polar deserts. Different biomes have different climates. Tropical rainforests have wet and warm climate, while deserts have dry climate. And to understand desert biome, it is important to understand the climate of the desert. Sprawling across the southwest USA in northern Mexico, this region is the hottest and the greenest desert. This is the Sonoran Desert. This desert is sometimes carpeted with colorful flowers. Sonoran Desert is also home to forests of giant cacti. These green cacti forests are due to summer rains and winter storms which help the growth of cacti. Towering saguaro cacti and organ pipe cacti are the most distinctive plants of this desert. This desert has some dangerous species of animals like rattlesnake, scorpion, and gila monster, which is one of the largest and most poisonous lizards. The favorite food of these lizards is eggs and small animals like mice and baby birds. After catching their victim, they bite it and hold on as the deadly poison flows into the teeth of Gila monster and through it into the victim's wound, thus paralyzing it. Miles and miles of irrigation canals have turned the arid imperial valley of Sonoran Desert into an intensive farmland where citrus fruits, sugar beet, and cotton are grown. To the north of Sonoran is Mojave Desert, with sand dunes and low sandy plains. Sand dunes are dunes formed as wind blowing acts as an eroding agent and weathers away rocks to sand. The Colorado River 
which flows from the Rocky Mountains to Mexico, passes through this desert. It supplies water to the cities of Los Angeles and Phoenix. Close to the Imperial Valley is the salt water lake called Salton Sea. This lake was formed from the water running away from the irrigated farmland of the Imperial Valley. Kit Peak Observatory in Sonoran Desert is a perfect place for stargazing. The Gulf of California close to Sonoran Desert is an important breeding ground for blue and grey waves. Close to this gulf is Sierra Madre mountain range. Here, the desert merges into forest, giving this area a green look. Deserts are also known as waterless world because of lack of water. In fact, the reason why deserts exist is lack of rain. Whatever little water manages to reach the desert evaporates from the ground, escaping into the atmosphere. Looking at the vast barren land, nobody can expect the climate of the desert to be varied. But it is surprising to know that there are hot deserts, cold deserts, polar deserts, windswept deserts and even deserts covered with fog. Hot deserts are spread all around the world, both on the north and south of tropical zone around the equator. If we move further north or south, we get cold deserts. Moving even further towards the north and south poles, we get ice-covered polar deserts. Al-Azizia in Libya is the hottest place on earth. The highest temperature recorded here was 57.8 degrees centigrade. The sizzling temperature was hot enough to fry an egg on the ground. Intense sunshine and hot windy weather which further decreases humidity makes the hot deserts even drier and uneasier for survival. It is not that deserts are always without rains. We can define a desert as a place that receives less than 250 millimeters or 10 inches of rainfall per year. But again, there are deserts that receive almost no rains at all. This is Aswan, a town in southern Egypt. This town sees no rainfall for years. But there are rare occasions when it does rain here. And the rain can be torrential. The thunderstorm wets the surface of the earth and the excess water flows like a sheet on the wet surface causing flash floods. It can be rightly said the deserts are full of surprises. People unaware of the deserts can assume that days and nights both must be hot in deserts. But the interesting fact is that the hotter the desert gets during the day, the cooler it becomes at night. And why does it happen? Deserts are made up of dry sands and bare rocks. They heat up fast during the day, giving out the heat in the atmosphere. But there are no clouds to trap the warmth rising from the ground. As a result, the heat does not take time to escape once the sun sets. Because of this, the deserts cool equally faster at night. These are the dust storms or the dust devils as they are known. Till now we have seen that deserts are hot and dry. They are windy as well. The ferocious wind blows sand into sea of dew, wearing off even the solid rocks and lifting dust, forming huge clouds of sandstorms. 
it so happens that in the middle of the afternoon, some places are hotter than others. Hot air expands, volume increases and rises up, causing conventional currents and at the same time, air starts rising over the hot spot, sucking in the surrounding air and at the same time, starts swirling and rising up. If the swirling air filled with dust and sand rises just few feet, then it is given the name dust depth. Sometimes the height goes much higher and the name given to it is whirlwind. Whirlwinds here are common and can be 1.6 kilometers tall. Their life is small, lasting for just few minutes as one dies, the other can spring up nearby as a surprise. Long ago, when people didn't know of the cause of whirlwinds, they were terrified of it and believed that they were sent by the gods to punish them for the sins they had committed. Today, people have understood the reason behind these desert whirlwinds. But the fact remains, if one gets caught in the whirlwind, it can cause great damage. These are the deserts of Southwest Asia and Sahara. They are covered with bare rock and gravel. It is not necessary for the deserts to be covered with sands. Similarly, it is not necessary that all deserts are hot. They can even be chilly. The city bordering Gobi Desert experiences a temperature of minus 13 degrees centigrade in the month of January. While during the warmest month in July, the temperature hardly exceeds the room temperature. The winter season makes the Gobi Desert a harsh place and bitterly cold. But another great desert lying to the west of Gobi has to face even more severe conditions. This is the desert of Thakla Maka. Here the temperature falls to minus 24 degrees centigrade in winter and during summer the temperature reaches 30 degrees centigrade. Being thousands of kilometers away from the ocean, these deserts are dry. And the reason for them being cold is that they are high above sea level and are located to the north of the tropics. One more myth about the desert is that it can never exist right next to the coast. This is Namib Desert, which runs along the coast of Southwest Africa. The Atacama Desert in South America runs along the coast of Chile and southern Peru. These two deserts are very peculiar. The climate here is dry, but the air is moist and fog is common here. Iron objects here rust very quickly. One wonders how these deserts exist when there is so much moisture in air. The cause of this type of climate is the cold Peruvian winds drifting from southern Peru ocean currents near the coast which flow along, giving rise to the cold currents. The chilly water cools the air, traveling towards the land. It stays low and does not rise high enough to form clouds. This makes the place cool and moist, causing sea fogs but no rain. Patagonia in Argentina is yet another cold desert. It is neither in subtropics nor in the center of big continent thousands of miles away from the sea. Then why it is a dry desert? This is because it lies in the rain shadow region of Andes mountains. The wind in this region comes from the west. But before it reaches the desert, it has to cross the high Andes mountain range. As the air rises over the mountains, it cools, causing moisture to condense and fall as rain. 
hail or snow on the windward side. But when the air reaches far side of the mountains, it is very dry, thus forming a rain shadow desert of Pantagonia. Atacama is like a narrow strip of desert between the Andes and the Pacific Ocean. This desert is so dry that there is no life in the middle of this desert. Only the western coast has sparse population due to fog and water from the Andes Mountains. Many people in Atacama see no rains at all for years. In fact, some people have never seen rain. Amazingly, people have still lived here some 10,000 years back. Initially, they lived on fish, shellfish and sea lion meat, but later irrigated land to grow corns and potatoes. Millions of pelicans, petrels, penguins and other seabirds as well as sea lions and otters use the coast of this desert to rest and breed. Here they do not have to worry about the land-based predators as the desert is empty and devoid of life. Even if the conditions for survival are not right, there are many lives that survive in hardest testing places like the deserts. The plants growing in deserts are called zero five. Starting from the tiny living stones to the giant cacti, there are many plants that have managed to make deserts their home and have learned to adapt to the tough conditions. Over the years, these plants have made themselves tough as they have to face soaring temperature of the day and the freezing temperature of the night. Another challenge they have to face is to find water and finally, they have to protect themselves from being eaten by the hungry animals. The amazing thing is, standing at one place, how do they manage to fight and survive? Well, scientifically called adaptions, these desert plants have all kinds of clever tricks as we are going to see. Keeping cool is very important in such scorching heat or else the plants must die. Due to excess heat in deserts, plants are bathed with more sunlight than they require. So how do they avoid excess sunlight? For this, they use the same method used by we human beings. During summer, we wear light colored clothes because light colors reflect the sun rays and keep us cool. Here, plants too are pale green or silver gray or sometimes have chalky white powder coated branches on them to survive. The light color of the plant reflects back the excess heat and keeps the plants cool even when it is extremely hot. Even though the desert plants have to struggle so hard to survive, the surprising thing is that the deserts are home to some of the longest living plants in the world. The bristle cone pines growing on the slopes of California's White Mountains are around 5,000 years old. It means that when the Egyptians were constructing their great pyramids, these plants were at that time 500 years old. All living organisms on planet Earth require water to survive and getting water in desert is not an easy task especially for plants that stand at one place. We know that plants get most of the water they need through their roots. Since very little water is found in deserts, the desert plants send their roots deep into the ground in search of water so that they can get as much water as possible.
the roots of some trees go as deep down as five story building the root of camel thorn acacia tree of africa can reach down twice as far the plants that cannot manage to send their roots deep down have another trick to collect water like many of the cactus plants spread their roots over a broad area and when it rains the network of roots collects as much water as possible before the water seeps deeper into the ground these roots can even absorb dews that are formed in the deserts during night there are many desert plants that have the capability of absorbing water from thin air using their leaves the bizarre welvisia is one such plant it grows in the namib desert in south western africa this plant has long tattered strap like leaves these leaves absorb tiny droplets of water from the sea fogs that come in from the atlantic ocean during the early hours of the morning just as we humans store water in our house for daily use these desert plants too have a big task of storing water because they might have to face the scarcity of water for a long long time some desert plants are good at storing water inside them these plants are called succulents or juicy plants succulent are those plants that crumble in the absence of moisture and regain prior condition in presence of the moisture other succulent plant such as agaves have thick fleshy sword like leaves spiking out from the center of the plant all these plants suck huge amount of water when it rains and store water inside them this helps them to survive in the months of drought but the plants keep losing their stored water from the pores of their leaves and it is necessary for the plants to keep the pores of their leaves in order to take in carbon dioxide gas that is required by the plants to make food when it comes to losing little amount of water it is beneficial for the plant as its roots get the opportunity to suck in more water along with the other nutrients from the soil when the climate of the desert gets fiercely hot the plants start losing water very fast under this condition most plants would shrink and die desert plants have come with another of their tricks to stop this from happening the cactus plants found in the deserts do not have leaves instead they have spines poking out of their stems these plants have replaced their leaves with spikes that do not lose water and instead of making food in the leaves they have started making food in the green stem where there are less pores one interesting thing to notice in the desert says that the plants have been spaced at regular intervals it is a technique devised by the desert plants to help them survive many desert plants ooze poisonous chemicals inside the ground by doing so they stop other plants to grow near them and share their water supplies some plants even grow a dense mat of roots 
this also stops other plants to grow in their surroundings being poisonous also makes sure that no one eats the plant the desert plants use poison as self defense for survival the window plant of namib desert buries its plump upright leaves under the desert surface only the tips of the leaves appear above the surface these tips or windows are made of see through material that lets the sunlight reach the rest of the leaf below ground this also helps the plant to cut down on the water loss although there are hardly any trees in the deserts of america the giant saguaro cacti is home for many birds like red-tailed hawk gila woodpecker and elf owls this is kalahari desert in south africa the name kalahari is derived from swana language which means the great thirst This desert stretches across Botswana to Namibia. This is not absolutely a dry desert. It has little water which helps the plants and animals to survive in this desert. The Kalahari has virtually no surface water. Its rivers have dry beds most of the time and flow only during wet months. Okavango Delta in Kalahari Desert has a spectacular array of wildlife including elephants, wildebeest, zebras and lions. The Central Kalahari Game Reserve protects the hunting of wildlife in this region. The Skeleton Coast in the Namib Desert is one of the world's driest places. It is believed that the name skeleton coast has been given because of the remains of the shipwrecked sailors who died there before they could find water with hardly any rain in the namib desert the living organisms have to depend on the cold water current in the nearby atlantic ocean the cold water currents create fog and moisture essential for plant and animal life of the desert the jackass penguins and many other seabirds nest on the namib coast millions of cape fur seals and seabirds breed on this coast feeding on the rich fishing grounds of this coast the sands of the namib coast are famous for the deposits of diamonds the most important diamond mine is at orange river on this coast when we look at the vast empty land we imagine that except for the plants that we have seen no life exists in deserts they are just empty spaces is it really so not at all what are the kinds of animals that live in the desert how do they survive in this hot weather without water is it possible for us human beings to live in such harsh conditions we will find the answers of these and many many more questions in the second part of deserts and semi deserts